What's going on guys? Another episode of uh, Taylor and Chasers and as I like to say, happy fly day as in Friday. Uh, we made it another Friday. I've uh, been on the river quite a few times this week and a few lakes trying to find these carp. Uh, it's still pre-spawn. Uh, we've had some weather issues out here. We had snow and freezing rain last week. Got a few days of nice weather and uh, it decided to uh, rain like severely rain like flood watch rain. So today it's raining so hard, I'm pretty sure I saw a cat or dog or something fall from the sky. Uh, flood watch warning, it's opening day of trout tomorrow. So this is trout opener eve, I guess. And uh, we're stuck inside tying flies, which is okay by me because I love tying flies. So I'm taking advantage of the time of me not be able to fish by tying flies. And this is uh, episode two of Happy Fly Day. So the fly we're going to tie today is um, my version of a hex GDN nymph. I tie it in two different two different styles, well three actually, but two for sure, uh, bead chain and dumbbell weights. Today we're going to do the bead chain. So I'm going to do a medium, medium bead chain and uh, gold. And then we're going to do, again, my favorite hook, must add signature number eight and a 3906 B. And that's 3X heavy, 2X long. And then some copper wire for the rib. And some Hungarian partridge for the uh, hackle slash legs. Some cream or some pale yellow hairline dubbing for the body. And some natural ringneck pheasant for the shell back slash tail. I've also done this with the rabbit tail uh, and uh, thin skin back. Pick your whatever you want to use. This is just happened to be out because this, this is one of my colors that worked really well last year. So I'm going to try it again. I'll probably do some later with some thin skin just to mix it up because that thin skin has got a little bit more sheen to it. Which you can do the same effect with a little bit of UV glow on top of it or uh, hard head. The ringneck pheasant is the right length uh, feathers, the fibers, the bobbin feather is the right length for the whole fly. Just to do the shell back, the wing case, and the tail all in one shot, which makes life a lot easier instead of doing a four step process. For, um, this is kind of like we're after right here. I don't know if you can see that or not. The dumbbell eye, so the bead chain. Uh, works good in deeper water, but we're going to use the uh, bead chain today because I'm using a lot shot of water. Um, so, and a few tips of this coffee, and then we're going to hit the vise and tie this uh, hex nymph up, carp style. Oh, yeah. Okay. Tan thread, six odd, make a thread base. B chain eyes, gold, medium. Front third of the hook. Give a little bit of gap, not a whole lot. Just enough mouth to make some room for legs and tighten everything down. Figure eight, and then wrap underneath it. Make it tight. Make sure you don't cut yourself. Your thread on the uh, sharp parts of the uh, bead chain. Couple more wraps. This way, that way, and pretty much underneath. Underneath the bead, but underneath over the hook. I'm gonna tighten everything down. Hang that down. Invert the hook. I'm going to make another base all the way down to the hook bend. And you want to go down, not halfway, probably a quarter of the way in the bend. So you want to put the tail here. You want the tail to basically kick up when this thing is falling down or on the bottom, if it's on the bottom. So we're going to tie it back over again. We're going to tie our tail in. We want a short tail. Probably don't want a tail like a third of a hook. Maybe half the hook bend. That's it. And then we're going to just we're going to measure it there and tie it down like that so it kicks out. Right? And then we're going to split this to the other side of the hook and then wrap that down behind it. We see we want the shell back on the top 
for the, on the barb side because we're going to invert the fly. Right? And then our copper wire in medium. That can go on the top too. We'll start back here. Hand the bead, chain eyes, and then rub it all the way back. Now we can invert it. Well, we can leave the flag like this or you can invert it. Take your pick. Doesn't really matter. This is going to stay there. That's going to go there. I'm going to make a dubbing loop. You can wax or not wax. Up to you. I find this rabbit dubbing is pretty, uh, it's okay not to wax. It's the other dubbings that are the UV ice dubs and stuff, the static stuff that's more slippery. It's the, that needs, a, sometimes it needs a touch of wax, depending on what you're doing with it. Rub it in front. Times. So it walks down there, doesn't come undone. Put the back, right back to the front third, right behind the bead chain. Take some dubbing, not a big clump, pretty good size clump. Like a pinch, like, like so. Right? Not terrible, not huge. Using that pale yellow color. And then we're going to um, double loop it. We're going to spread out a little bit. Get, you know, a little taper at the front, a little thinner at the back. And spin it. And spin again. Spin, spin, spin. Basically, spin it till it's makes it's pretty tight and pull this chunk out here. So that if we need it for the thorax, and then we're gonna wrap it. Go a little further back it's to start. Cover up some of that tail that we made to split, and then to the forward front to make a uniform body. Right behind the front third of this hook. In the chain. Now you can just leave it on there a little longer if you want. I find it easier if you don't do a really long dubbing loop just to tie it off here and just make a new one. It makes life easier. Alright. Clean this up a bit here. Make it look fancy. Okay, we're gonna take our we're net pheasant, spread it apart, little like so, and then make our shell back. We split it in half, so we're gonna put it back together again. Make our shell back, and then we're gonna tie it down just behind the bead chain. There copper wire. We went that one way before, we're going to go the opposite direction. So let's keep that dubbing loop tight and make our ribs. Oh, well, three or four ribs. Right there. On that side. On that side. Make sure it's good. And we're going to helicopter it off. That's off. And then we're going to take our those feathers again and we're going to go back over it, our thread wraps to cover them up. We're going to make a, we're going to tie our partridge feather in, Hungarian partridge, and natural. You can tie it by the tips or tie it by the stem. This one's pretty uh, bushy, whatever, so I'm going to tie it by the stem and then wrap it. I'm going to clean some of it. Let's do that. I'm going to clean some of it off here. I want these things on there, but I don't want too much. Tie with a stem. And then cut that off. Take a little more of this dubbing. 
just gonna dump it right on there. Make it fat. You can double loop if you think you want, or you just put it on there. I never had a problem with it. We're gonna use, put some UV glue on here anyway, so it's gonna be pretty secure. We're gonna go over top, figure eight, throw that, and that. Wrap her down. Take our uh, green partridge just behind the bee chain. Wrap that around like so. Let's split them in half. Half on one side, half the other. And take this ringneck pheasant tail and make their shell case. In front of it, screw it down. Cut it short. Finish off the head. Bit finish. Cut that off. And then we're gonna hit it with some UV glue. I'm using the uh, solar res in uh, thick or thin, sorry. Solar res thin. My favorite one. I've used pretty much every kind. This is my favorite one. Let's put the feathers down. Right on this pheasant feather, make a bit of a shell back. Let's soak in for a second. Hit it with the uh, white. A couple times. Boom. There it is. And there is my hex nymph carp style. Happy fly day. Anyways, I'm Tillers and Chasers. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you really like this video, hit that subscribe button. I'm out.